Uh, so hi, uh, everybody. I am Neeti, and uh, this is um, the second uh, consecutive talk. Just a show of hands, how many of you were there for the previous talk? All right, OK. Um, so now I'm going to be talking about uh, Phrase It, which is a tool for automatic um, text summarization. It's an extraction-based uh, summarization. A little bit about me. I am a data scientist at IBM Watson. Um, where I work on conceptualizing core machine learning and NLP algorithmic paradigms and also building cognitive solutions specific for partner use cases. I did my bachelor's in computer science from Bitspilani in India, followed up with a master's from the University of Texas at Austin. I've been at Watson for a little over 10 months now. Uh, I am consistently battling entropy. Uh, I'm on the path where I'd like to become a Bayesian ninja and belong to the group of people who laugh out loud really loud, and that's a picture of me doing exactly that. OK, so um, for this particular talk, the focus is uh, phrase it. Now, um, text summarization happens in two ways. There are two kinds of algorithms uh, that exist and two kinds of uh, literature that gets published around summarization. Uh, there's extraction-based summarization, and there is abstraction-based summarization. So extraction-based summarization is basically when given a document or documents of text. Effectively, what is done is that you are um, extracting sentences from that passage or document of text verbatim. So there's no condensing that's happening in any format. It's just picking out sentences to form a shorter summary. Abstraction-based uh, summarization, however, works uh, differently, wherein apart from um, condensing uh, sentences in the sense that picking out the most relevant sentences, you're also changing the manner in which um, a document is represented. So that's the more true summarization framework. But phrase it is an extraction-based summarization. So it follows two primary steps. Uh, the first is where um, we establish a thematic or a descriptive score with every sentence in a passage of text. And then we reorder all the sentences in that passage or document of text on the basis of thematic relevance. Um, you'd see across literature in extraction-based summarization that uh, sentences get ranked on the basis of three statis, uh, static features which are used as indexing weights. And these static features are term frequency, term position, and term <coughs> length. So um, while building Phrase It, uh, the idea behind it was why just work with three static features? Why not account for context and a contextual understanding so that we are able to associate a theme with whatever document we are investigating in order to render a summary. So um, the second step that Phrase It did is where we ranked sentences on the basis of a thematic score which was associated to them. And in this regard, we were able to allow for a contextual understanding. So Phrase It therefore introduces um, the unique idea of a context-based indexing to resolve the problem uh, instead of working with a context-independent term indexing. Um, it's important to understand that every document that we are working with, more often than not, contains content-specific terms and background terms. So. Um, Instead of just um, thinking of every document as devoid of the context in which it appears, it's kind of important to account for that context. And that's exactly what uh, we did through Phrase It, because the existing models in the extraction-based summarization space, they're not really able to distinguish and differentiate between terms by a sole reliance on just term weights, because the term bases here are term frequency, term position, and term length. So. Um, we use even context when establishing the importance of a sentence in a passage or document. So this complete dependence on term significance is reduced heavily, and now your document indexing weight is not completely independent of the context in which it appears. Um, talking about the algorithmic framework that gets leveraged, we are powering off our text rank, which is an unsupervised algorithm. Uh, the reason, again, for using an unsupervised algorithm is because with a supervised text, uh, summar uh, with supervised algorithmic paradigms for summarization, you need to provide a large amount of training data. And this, in effect, translates to having a whole bunch of documents with a bunch of known key phrases. And while uh, supervised uh, techniques are capable of 
producing what we call as interpretable rules um, in order to identify what characterizes a key phrase. Uh, the trade-off was that you require a significant amount of training data, and so we decided to move away from that into the space of unsupervised algorithmic paradigms for um, extraction-based summarization instead. Additionally, with an unsupervised um, key phrase extraction framework like PhraseIt, um, it's also way more portable because it hasn't been trained on a specific domain. So basically, there isn't any kind of customization in the extraction process. Instead, it's capable of learning um, features that are present in um, the text, and they're able to determine whether certain key phrases are central to the text or not. So uh, this is done um, with TextRank. It works similar to Google's PageRank algorithm, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with, where uh, the idea is to uh, select the most important web pages. Um, but again, like I said, with text rank, it is a graph-based ordering algorithm, and um, it associates importance of a sentence in a passage or document of text by uh, using the static features of term position, term frequency, and term length. So we don't do that. Uh, we work with also context, and I'll just explain how. Um, yeah. So. What's happening with PhraseIt, uh, if we need to put it in perspective, it's, is that it's just a general uh, graph-based ranking algorithm. And um, this is how it, it's going to work. So basically, every sentence in a passage or document of text gets represented as a node. And the edges uh, across these various sentences are what is going to this comes from the contextualized phrasal vectors, uh, which is what I went over in the previous talk. But I'm just going to do a quick overview for those of you who weren't part of the previous talk. Uh, effectively, with the uh, contextualized phrasal vectors, I am able to um, get a phrasal representation for every sentence um, on the basis of the core concepts and the core topics which are referenced in that particular sentence. Uh, it is. Uh, it powers off both structural similarity as well as um, semantic similarity. So for the structural similarity piece, we are basically uh, looking at, how do I explain this in really short, because that was all of the previous talk. OK, so we have uh, word to vec and we have word nets and sets. And what I'm doing uh, is that uh, with word to vec and word nets and sets in word to vec I have LSA as well as LDA additionally. So word to vec has been augmented now to be able to render phrasal variations, phrasal representations of sentences, as opposed to just a vector representation at a singular word level. And this is uh, possible because of LSA and LDA, where LSA references the most important concepts in that sentence, and LDA uh, references the most important topics in that sentence. So basically, by leveraging this piece, I'm able to get a phrasal representation for every sentence. And this is what gets used in order to establish how important a sentence is to a passage or document of text, because that is what is giving me the theme uh, that associates a particular sentence given a document or passage. Um, post this kind of evaluation, effectively, uh, once this kind of graph is constructed, we use a, a stochastic or a Markov matrix to identify the ordering of uh, the sentences on the basis of thematic relevance. So whichever uh, sentence has a higher thematic relevance automatically gets bumped up in the reordering. Um, and that gets pushed up in the summary that gets rendered. Um, so this, if we need to go into uh, more detail, basically for the Markov matrix, I'm going to obtain that kind of ordering on the basis of the eigenvector that corresponds to the eigenvalue of 1. Um, phrase it, again, has been validated against the state of the art on Semiwell, um, as well as uh, the Duke 2003 corpus. Uh, Post-2003, uh, uh, Duke, uh, as well as all of NIST, they've been using a metric called Rouge, on which I haven't done analysis just yet. So we were sticking to uh, metrics of accuracy and F just in order to retain uh, metric consistency across all of the state of the art that we've evaluated on. Um, so here are the results around that. Phrase it essentially, like I said, it's a text rank with lexicalized association because it's a loving for an understanding of uh, context. And um, here, the accuracy, it beats the state of the art. Uh, 
with 70.02 on accuracy, and the F is 59.9. Um, the initial, the baseline was um, a knife-based algorithm that had an accuracy of 40.3 and an F of 27.8. Uh, I know that this talk is scheduled for 50 minutes, but I don't know why that was. Uh, it seems like the previous talk in this talk should have been interchanged on time. But I'm going to quickly show you guys a demo, and I think we're going to wrap up much earlier here. So this is uh, just a piece of uh, dummy text. Um, it's an email conversation uh, that had happened. And, uh, what I do here is let me just show you with Alchemy language because this is something that has been integrated with Phraseit. Um, I get the most important concepts which are referenced in this particular uh, piece of text. So uh, the piece of text, for those of you, if you can't read, is basically I hope you got my email earlier on the venue. We look forward to seeing you at the breakfast session on Wednesday. Furthermore, given our past discussions in your focus area, I also wanted to check with you if you'd like to schedule a meeting. Uh, would want to schedule a meeting in the second half of tomorrow. Let me know if either option work for you. So basically, uh, by leveraging Alchemy, I am also additionally able to get a sense of the keywords and the associated relevance across these keywords. Um, and that is something that gets used in Phraseit additionally when building that contextual indexing space. Um, here is a demo of Phraseit. I'm plugging in the exact same text. And um, this demo is just to basically show you how uh, Phraseit is able to pick out sentences on the basis of what might be most significant to a particular passage of text and what is really the call to action item. So if each one of you just reads this particular passage of text, uh, there are certain action items which are referenced there. And so if you basically wanted to pick out just one sentence which is most crucial to this entire email, um, it would probably be, I also wanted to check with you if you would like to schedule a meeting with Gregory and us, where scheduling a meeting is the most important action item. So as you would see, phrase it does a pretty neat job, and this is why I like to use this particular dummy piece of text, because uh, it picks out the correct action item as the single line summary. Now, in the two line summary, it picks out the second action item, which is we look forward to seeing you at the breakfast session on Wednesday. Um, it also does something neat here, which is it reorders uh, the second call to action item in position one and pushes the first call to action item in position two. The reasoning behind this is that Phraseit also has a cohesive summary um, sense. So it knows that sentences that start with furthermore are not the way that ideal, ideally summaries would get generated. And um, so it reorders um, various sentences in the summary in order to get um, a summary which is more cohesive to read. Uh, you can work with, so say you have a particular document of text and you want a 20% uh, reduction in that document. Phraseit allows you to do that. It's just not part of this particular demo. Uh, you can also get a deduction on the basis of the number of lines that you would want in a summary. Say you have 100 lines in um, your document and you want to reduce that to like maybe the top 12. Phraseit will also enable you to do that. There is another piece uh, to phrase it, which I have added recently, which is currently phrase it, uh, at least the demo here, is a single document summarization, which means for one particular document or a bunch of passages of text, it's going to render um, the essence of that passage or document of text. I've extended this to um, a multi-document summarization framework, where basically you can have more than one documents, and a phrase it will still pick out the most important uh, sentences referenced across all of those documents. Um, this is done where the text rank algorithm is replaced by a lex rank algorithm. And uh, the utility of this is, uh, apart from just picking out those sentences which are important across various documents, there is a post-processing heuristic that I use called cross-information subsumption. And using cross-information subsumption, if there are certain sentences which are basically paraphrases of each other or are saying the same kind of thing, we remove those. and. Uh, we allow for, we bias for lexical diversity so that every uh, sentence which is picked out of different documents too gets represented in that summary. So that's an extension of what um, is being worked on now. Um, and yeah, that's 
pretty much uh, what I wanted to show you guys through the automatic text summarization piece. I see we've done really well on time. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask at this point. Yes. So after meaning to ask this at the last question, but what exactly does it at the last talk, but what exactly does it mean to find entropy? Uh, randomness, just fighting <laughs> randomness. I uh, have some kind of OCD and everything just needs to be structured. Kind of mirrors my job where as a data scientist I have to find structure in data. So I guess it's it's just there in life. Uh, the summaries? The oh, that's just the sizing, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, you mentioned that this is an unsupervised approach. Correct. Um, but you also mentioned that uh, one of the main ingredients uh, in terms of developing like, what amount of I guess, vector representations of each sentence um, is a word to back, uh, is word to back, which mm -hmm would have been trained, I assume, on a corpus at some point, right? Um, so word-to-vec, uh, I'm just using that word-to-vec piece, which is the Wiktionary corpus. So there are no labels as such which is associated with any kind of data. Uh, the idea is to get a phrasal representation of every sentence in a vector format, basically contextualized phrasal vectors as opposed to word vector representations. Oh, yeah. Right. So, so those, those vectors are obviously Yeah, those vectors. On, on Precisely, precisely. Yep, that's what it is. Any other questions? Yes. Have you tried this on languages other than English? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any more? Yes. Have you tried like a reverse, reverse tweeting process? Like if it, there is a summary generated by phrasing, is it possible to phrase that to be documented or generated from? No. Now, uh, phrase it was conceptualized for the use case wherein uh, we have a lot of partners who work with IBM Watson who have a lot of noisy, crappy data. Sometimes a lot of the data is just outliers. The idea is to pick out what is the essence in that data so that we'd at least have neat enough data when we are training our systems. So uh, that's what that's been done to. But that is an interesting um, thought and should be implemented. For, for what? What to vec. Yeah. Which one, which one is the good library to experiment kind of uh, There are like Google's open sourced uh, word to vec, although they call it is not really part of their, uh, not really something that they've given out, but it's still, it's still easily available. So that's something that you can look up. Is that it? All right. Okay. <laughs>